session. Hello everyone, welcome to this next demo session on SAP S4 HANA training for developers. This training includes SAP HANA, SAP ABAP on HANA, and SAP S4 HANA technical concepts. In the next couple of days and weeks throughout this course, we will be learning the most powerful concepts with our latest ERP, so called S4 HANA on premise. <coughs> In this course, we will focus on the evolution of ERP system on top of SAP HANA. If you are beginner with SAP HANA, don't need to worry. We will cover SAP HANA architecture, design, and platform in this course. We will also talk about development on SAP HANA, building the different variety of views, writing the SQL script logic from scratch without a copy paste, and also exposing these objects of SAP HANA in the ABAP layer. Along with that, we will move to SAP S4 HANA architecture. We will discuss how the S4 HANA evolution is changing the industry with key features like CDS views, ABAP managed data procedures, performance tuning, and SQL performance work list. We will talk about what it means for an ABAP developer to work on an ABAP on HANA project, a suite on HANA project, or an S4 HANA project. We will also discuss on migration to S4 HANA custom code. We'll talk about simplification database and features which SAP provides with S4 in terms of simplification. Together with that, we will learn how can we create analytic, transactional, and work list kind of applications with SAP Fiori on top of SAP S4 HANA architecture. We will have a deep dive session in SAP Virtual Data Model with SAP CDS concept, which is typically used in S4 HANA world, creating the OData services on top of CDS views, and many of these things probably a jargon for you right, right now. But over this course, you will be learning all these features from scratch along with me without any copy paste of code. All of this we will be doing in a live system, which is an SAP S4 HANA 1809 support pack 2 system enabled with local access using SAPQI, local access using Eclipse and SAP based ABAP development tools on Eclipse. We will also be able to consume these Fury apps on SAP Fury launch pad from your local computer's browser. You would be able to create these applications end-to-end -end in your local machine and then deploy to the S4 HANA system and transport them to the quality in production. Together with that, we will also integrate our Fury apps with the launchpad to see these applications working end-to-end -end, our end -to -end POCs. Along with that, we will also not leave our custom code behind, the code which you have developed over a period of time. It's time that it leveraged the power of SAP HANA, the computing power of in-memory database called SAP HANA, and improve the performance in your company if you're working on suite on HANA projects. And also give a new dimension to your code with the help of CDS, EMDP, SQL script, ADBC concepts, which are available now with suite on HANA and S4 HANA. All of this will be done on SAP HANA 2.0 SP3 system, powered by ABAP on HANA architecture with HANA working as a primary database and will have a connectivity to all these systems together with a single server. So let's get started in this demo session of one hour. We will explore the basic features of ABAP on HANA architecture. We will talk about the architecture of SAP ABAP with top of HANA database and see how can we create a new paradigm object like a CDS and then we will create an OData service out of that finally create a Fiori application in this demo session so let's get started I will start first with the evolution of your ERP system so most of you are already familiar a little bit about SAP architecture SAP design so-called three-tier architecture in the conventional system so-called ECC system ECC is your functional system, which is based out of SAP ABAP on HANA architecture, so-called 
S4 HANA architecture. And now in that ECC system is transforming to an S4 HANA system or a suite on HANA system, what it means for you. And then how, how can you optimize and leverage the best of SAP HANA to create your new dimension applications which are enabled with Fury user experience. So this is the diagram which explains you the evolution of ERP system. In 1979, with the startup of a SAP as a company in 1972, the first version of R2 architecture was released in 1979. The R here stands for real time and two stands for two tier architecture. With the evolution of internet and ERP applications, SAP introduced in 1992, a new architecture or new version of ECC with R3, real-time three-tier architecture. These three layers are called presentation, application, and database layers. The main advantage of three-tier architecture is to simplify your system design and allows you to make the system overall flexible so you can plug and play with any of the layers. With that, SAP also introduced a solution so-called Complete ERP with Business Suite in 2004. The Business Suite solution is a complete package surrounded with Enterprise Resource Planning Core, which includes core modules like HR, PP, MM, FICO, and surrounding with SRM, PLM, CRM, and, and HCM. That becomes your Business Suite. And with emergence of 2015, SAP started a new innovation on top of their most talked about database, so-called in-memory database, HANA. They have released a new solution, new RP solution, so-called S4 HANA. In this course, we will try to break down the multiple myths which are going around you in your company. You might have heard about people talking the difference between ABAP on HANA and S4 HANA, the suite on HANA and S4 HANA, HANA and ABAP on HANA, HANA native architecture versus ERP, based S4 architectures, we will break down multiple myths there. And we will give you a guidance of building the latest cutting edge applications with some of the cutting edge features like annotations in S4 HANA system. So let's get started with introduction of an ABAP on HANA system, how it is better than your typical R3 system. So if we talk about our R3 system architecture, as I just mentioned, have those three layers presentation application and database layer that was so called an r3 three tier architecture so in the presentation layer we talk about so called sap gui and that is your presentation layer from where user interacts with such an erp system then in the middle we have the application layer this application layer is nothing but so-called your based out of NetWeaver Foundation. NetWeaver is the technical platform. On top of it, all the applications of SAP are based upon. This provides the runtime for your ABAP-based applications as well. For example, if we try to execute a C program in a Notepad file, we will not be able to do that because it needs a C compiler. Similarly, if you would like to run an ABAP program, it needs a foundation, it needs a runtime. So NetWeaver is that runtime which allows you to execute all your ABAP application. It understands the ABAP code. That's your foundation for your application layer. And then finally, the database layer, which is nothing but your storage of the data. So this was so-called the three-tier architecture since quite long we all are aware of those who are associated to SAP industry or those who are even new now you understand so-called the three-tier architecture. But what has happened over a period of time, the solutions are moving more towards digital enterprise. The companies want faster innovation cycles. They want less time to value. They want to reduce down the implementation cycle and want the simplification of the ERP system. And that's where SAP introduced so-called a new solution in 2015 called S4 HANA. So S4 HANA stands for simplified. So S in S4 HANA stands for simplified. And 4 stands for fourth generation ERP system. 
and the beauty of this system it is based on top of sap hana database so till today in your ecc system you being using the database as just a storage medium there was literally no logic which was writing down in the database layer this was just stored as a dummy store for storing all the data all the processing logic which you used to execute was somewhere written in this layer this is the layer where most of your processing was taken care most of your processing was 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 done in this layer actually so that was exactly your 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 processing layer was this was your application layer all right so in this application layer all the processing was happening till today so what you used to do for example if you're in a bapper you understand that when we write when we've been asked to write a report program by our manager we write select star from database from mara table pull all the data in my internal table loop at internal table and do the processing and then feed that data maybe to an interface to an ale to an idoc maybe write a body write a bapi do the user exit do the function exits or uh, write idocs or do all the kind of processing which you wanted to do was done in the application layer in 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 the in the form of an abap logic that was the main programming log language we used there on the application layer but now with introduction and database was used just as a dummy store we just dump our data in the database just to keep it hey can you store this somewhere so that is why what was happening till today but with emergence of new technology the reduction in the memory cost drastically you remember the time when you used to buy a small iphone or a small uh, ipod which used to store just hardly 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 songs with with, with the cost of let's say 150 bucks 150 dollars and now the same is available in as cheaper as 20 dollars 10 dollars 20 dollars 25 dollars with a uh, one gigabytes of, of of memory so with a drastic reduction in the memory price it was possible to design a database which keeps all the data in memory as a result of that you get, get a great performance improvement and that's what exactly this hana database is of course in the upcoming chapters we will have a deep dive inside sap hana as part of this course you should not know anything about sap hana you are very much beginner to sap hana we'll start with the introduction of sap hana in our next session so th this is what has happened sap has now slowly replacing the database layer all the typical rdbms system which was maybe using max db or db6 or oracle database now replaced with sap hana so this was the first change which has happened in the bottom most layer now what exactly it impacts how does it impact the way we work with this sap system as an application developer so earlier what you used to do is most of your processing logic was 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 actually written on the application layer so if i try to draw this in a pyramidic approach where exactly most of your processing logic occurs it's like this if you see here the the larger the size of the pyramid indicates that more processing was happening on the application layer and the less processing was happening on the database layer but now with sap hana the data is being stored in memory hence you want you also get more power with more ram and you get a very wealthy system with a lot of system resources computing power keeping the data in memory drastic reduction in the cost of the of the memory you are now capable of doing more so earlier you were fetching all the data all the way from the database layer to the application layer and then doing all the processing over here which was very costly because over this network tunnel you got to transfer more and more data and all the processing takes place on the application layer which has which has very limited resources hence your performance was compromised at times you are bound to not do certain things which you wanted to do in an erp system like complicated mass batch operations but now with sap hana it is possible it gives us more computing power deep into the database layer so we are going to explore all these in our course using the techniques like views uh, like cds views like attribute analytic and calculation views like sql scripting amdps adbcs like writing procedures udfs anonymous blocks all that will we will be we will be achieving and now with that you will be able to push down this logic deep into the hana layer and now once the data is 
is processed in the database layer, you only transfer the final result to the application layer. Now look at the advantage of this approach. Uh, the first of all, this approach has a name and that name is called code to data paradigm. So this approach is called code to data paradigm. So in interview, somebody asks you what is code to data paradigm. So code to data paradigm in definition is actually when we push down our logic deep into the database layer, which is so-called HANA, it has more computing power so that we can achieve the best performance out of an SAP ABAP on HANA system. So that is what called code to data paradigm, where you're pushing down the logic into HANA. And why are we doing that? Because now we our data is stored here. And if you process the data here, it is less costly. You don't have to transfer large amount of data to this layer. So your, your network cost comes down. You're investing heavily on the, on the database layer because database cost is higher because it's an in-memory database and it keeps the data all in the RAM. So the potential bottleneck of processing and transferring the data from different layers has been reduced down. And now you can achieve a code to data paradigm to get the best performance out. And this is what a big shift now, the way we work with with the new system, which is based out of SAP HANA, or be, be a BW on HANA system, or be in a ABAP on HANA system, or be in an S4 HANA system, this is a great advantage which we get over here. So this is called code to data paradigm, where more and more processing logic is now going slowly into the database layer. And throughout this course, I will be covering multiple techniques to achieve this code to data paradigm. But this has also at times implication in terms of, in terms of application programming how you used to program your typical reports they are subjected to change because now you have to use new techniques new ways to apply analytics to apply transactional processing so you can get best out of sap hana so maybe till today in your company you may have an sap hana database on top of it your erp is running but you're not able to leverage the the best benefit out of that till today but from now on with this course, you will be equipped to utilize the power of SAP HANA in your ERP system. With that, you will also be able to build new dimension applications. So that was one change the transformation which has happened over a period of time in the ERP world. The second transformation which has happened, SAP also improving this NetWeaver layer. So NetWeaver from SAP NetWeaver 7.4 onwards, we get a lot of, lot of new features. There is a new ABAP syntax which was introduced. There were a lot of transparent optimizations. There are new frameworks like integrated data access with the ELV, um, fuzzy search, fault tolerant search, um, the context based searches, uh, creation capability to create O data services, the gateway architecture. Don't worry about these jargons, guys. I'm, I'm sure many of you would have tried learning about on HANA or S4 HANA from different materials, videos, blogs, wiki pages, but Till today, you were maybe not that successful because most of the trainers and the approaches which they take is copy-paste approach. They will just say, okay, copy this code, paste this code, somehow you get your output, but you're not getting that sense of understanding, understanding the deep level, the architecture side, the, the detailing side, how the system is behaving. What has exactly changed? What is that? Now I'm able to do more out, out of system, the same system which is now coming with the enhanced architecture, the enhanced version. We will discuss about the features of SAP NetWeaver 7.5 as well. There are a lot of features like CDS table functions, uh, Fury annotations, UI annotations, analytic annotations, VDM. These are all the new features with 7.5. We will be discussing about 7.4 to 7.5, all the latest features and syntaxes which has been changed in ABAP layer as part of this course. Right now, don't be overwhelmed by the topic names which I'm just giving it here. All of this, I'm just giving you a brief idea in this demo session to understand the big picture and, 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 and get that right feeling that what is that we are going to achieve and do at the end of the day. All right, so now that was another change in the middleware layer. So you see the first change in the database layer, it's been transformed to HANADB, an in-memory database. The second layer is in the application layer, transforming to 7.4 and now moving to 7.5. The latest version is 7.53. And then on the front end side, this is, this is what I love the most. But from here, now you see the way user consumes the software has also been changed drastically over a period of time. In the recent years, you see more and more consumptions of, of the front end, the, the applications, the end user interface has been, has been came into the browser. So some, some years back, it has came into the browser. 
So when it came into the browser, SAP introduced two technologies, so-called BSP and Webdin Pros. Webdin Pro was then available on Webdin Pro ABAP and Webdin Pro Java. And that was a very popular programming language as an ABAP developer. I myself and a Webdin Pro developer for about 10 years, I worked on this technology. But slowly now you're seeing a big shift. Everybody is talking about so-called SAP Fiori. That's the new UX, that's a new user experience of SAP World, where now we get applications which are coming with this nice, beautiful blue crystal and a breeze theme, and now Fiori 3 is coming with conversational UI, auto uh, co-pilot, and a lot of these conversational UI and artificial intelligence features built in into it with SAP s 4 n architecture or s 4 n solution. Most of the applications are already visually harmonized to, to Fiori user experience, or they are built by Fiori UX and that's another shift on the presentation layer which is happening over here as part of the presentation layer where now this is moving more on the mobile the tablet and the desktop and projector based screen adopt your UI automatically based on the device you execute you got to write only code once and it adopts the, the screens automatically based on the device that's the major advantage of using Fiori along with that it, it is role based contextual current experience, it has a Fiori security concepts, a central entry point for all the applications, so-called Fiori Launchpad, we have theme designer to apply custom theming and branding options, we have conversational UI, we have co-pilot, we have context search, we have app finder, we have user uh, customizing, personalization, we have uh, you know tile-based access, adoption of apps in, in based on the devices, all oh, lot of new features are coming up with the Fiori user experience. So now in this course actually we are going to touch almost every layer the major work which we will be focusing is on the back end side the hana side and also we will touch upon little bit on building this fury application in fact that's also something which i will show you in today's today's demo session we will create a nice beautiful fury application but don't be overwhelmed by this, my demo today because this is just a demo session to give you a kind of feeling about how will the classes be, what will be my teaching strategy, what is that we are going to cover in a, in a nutshell. But over a period of time, when we will go get in into the classes, we will start something from scratch as if like you are a fresher on and you just have a basic experience or basic idea on ABAP. So this course is more suitable for those who are starting very new to SAP HANA, SAP ABAP on HANA. You might have heard these words somewhere never experienced anything about these things so this is where we will be starting our or setting our our uh, our starting line so we will start from line ground zero so maybe don't be overwhelmed by my demo today i may talk about a lot of things but please understand this is just a demo session there is a lot which we all have to achieve together starting from the scratch you might have seen my my demo videos on the YouTube on SAP UI5, Fiori, Gateway, Launchpad, OData, ABAP on HANA, S4 HANA, S4 HANA Technicals, extensions, in-app extensions, side-by-side -side extensions, Olingo, SAP Cloud Platform, WebID, WebID Full Stack, Fiori Security, Launchpad, Launchpad, Gateway, all these concepts you might have seen my YouTube channel where you would have seen all these demo session and got impressed by that and joined this demo today probably it's going to be like that and it's my promise to you that we will not do any single line of copy paste of code that's not the right strategy because trainers who are de doing a copy paste of code they are cheating you they are not going to cover the concepts line by line making you understand the meaning of the line but in this course it's a my promise to you that will not do any copy paste of code with that let's get started and see what is that in the today's demo session we're going to see in the system? So what I'm going to do is I will create a very simple report using CDS view. So basically imagine that you've been you've been writing an ABAP program and then using this ABAP program, you're writing a module pool and this module pool was, was showing some data to the user. This is what you've been doing in the typical ECC world. Or, or you be working on a, on a BW system, so you are writing as a BW consultant a BAX report or data extractors, BW extractors you were using, and then on top of it, you is using some BW tools like Crystal Report, Bob J to extract this data and showing an analytics. So this is what you've been doing either in any of those worlds, but now you see in BW itself, there is not much opportunities you're finding in, in, in US market, you're not getting much of openings there, and everybody's talking about CDS, you know, latest concepts, S4HANA, because that's what is really an industry shift also happening 
the SAP HANA architecture is actually bringing together both the transactional and analytic systems. And we will be exploring this in detail in our upcoming days, start with the, with the, with the live session, all right? So now, imagine this is what you've been doing. And now what we do with this S4 HANA system as of now in the demo session, we will be writing a simple CDS view. And what is the purpose of CDS view here is to extract the data from the systems, what, what you've been doing with the select query by far. And then I'm gonna write a screen and guess what? This screen is going to be a Fiori user interface, a Fiori screen. Yeah. So that is what we will be doing in this demo session. Now, which are all the development tools are we going to use to to achieve this um, this small POC today in this demo session? So the first tool which I'm going to use is something called Eclipse tool, and it is powered by ADT, ABAP Development Tools and Eclipse. And don't be overwhelmed with this Eclipse and ADT. Uh, many people may think, what is ADT? What is an Eclipse and Ubo? Don't worry about it. I will be explaining this in our chapter number four, is starting from scratch, what is Eclipse? Now, it is a myth. Many people think that if it is Eclipse, is it Java? Not at all. In this course, there is no talking about Java at all. There is no Java required for this course. Eclipse is just another development tool it's an open source development tool just like any other development tool what you do in SEAT similarly you can do it in Eclipse it's just a development tool nothing to do with Java at this point of time so we'll discuss the installation of the tools what tools are required how to install them set up them connect to your system all this will be covering in chapter number four of this course and then for developing a Fiori application a user interface I will be using something called web IDE Web ID as the name stands, web. Web stands for internet, web-based, and IDE stands for integrated development environment. This is another development tool which we will be using to create a small Fiori application on top of, um, on top of your existing data. So what is that I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create a small application on business partners table. So I have a connection to my S4 on a system. I will just go to my S4 on a system and show you the table first. And then I will show you creating a very small uh, CS view. CS view is right now just understand the very basic. It is nothing but a, a, a query, a stored query. Okay. Maybe, of course, I um, may not be sounding it very, very technical at this point of time to not confuse you. But I would just understand that CDS view is just like a view. It's a query which reads the data from your table. Okay, the benefits of CDS view, the, the advantage of CDS view, the annotation concept of CDS view, the detailing of CDS view, the ways by which CDS are created, CDS security, AMDP, or CDS table function, how to create joints between CDS, create association, writing this DCL for CDS, metadata extensions, all these things we will be discussing deep dive inside CDS, CDS view chapters. There is 40% of this course actually based out of CDS. Okay, so now, right now, for this demo session, I'm just going to write a very simple CDS to extract data from my database table, and then I'm going to consume this in a Fiori application. So let's get started. I'll quickly switch to my development environment. How did I got this development environment activated in my system? Don't worry about that right now. I will explain you that in the chapter number four. So I'm going to show quickly a table, database table, which I have in my system. So I'll go there to control shift A. This is so-called Eclipse environment with ABAP development tools. Uh, I will explain this tool and installation, setup, connection, everything in detail in chapter number four. Try to understand there's a tool which we will use to do some of our development. So I'm going to go and search for a table, SNWD business partner table. So this is a table in my S4 HANA system, which is given for practice and demo purpose, like you used to use S flight tables in the trainings. When you started about programming in your in your life, then you somebody or trainer would have taught you S flight table. Similarly, this is a another database table which present in SAP S4 on our system. I'm just going to F8 and show you some data over here. So you see it's storing some dummy data for the business partners. Yeah, that's that's the data it's actually storing, and you can see it stores some company names, some business partner ID, the contact number, the fax number, and I'm going to write a very simple 
uh, query using CDS, and then I will be exposing this data in a Fiori application. And this is going to be very easy and simple to understand. So let's get started. I will first write my CDS view. So I'm going to come to my user over here, right click over here, and I will just create a CDS view. Okay. Now imagine a CDS view as your data source as compared to your select query in the past. The benefit of CDS view, it is Right now, understand it is a, one of the best technique to achieve code to data paradigm because when you create a CDS view, it creates a view inside of database, inside of SAP HANA, and that gives you a power to compute things up in the database, and hence you get an improved performance as compared to writing select queries, which are then passed through multiple layers of ABAP and then given to the database, which takes a lot of time. So here it is all feed it to the HANA directly, HANA view gets created and HANA then gives you the data out of the box. Only the final transfer of the data takes place from the database to the application layer. So I'll just go inside and I will create a new CDS view. Uh, just come here, say core data services. CDS stands for core data services. Don't don't uh, look at this demo as if, as if you are an expert. I'm just covering my style of uh, teaching in this demo. I'm not going to um, you know, go deeper into these topics, but there is a dedicated units plot in our course on each of these topics. So let's create our data definition. I'm gonna name this. So guys, together we're learning, we will also learn best practices. See, anybody can develop the code, but what code which you developed goes through the proper reviews? What if your architect reviews your code? How many good marks are you going to get in that review? How many bad comments are you going to get review? Many times, many of my students say, Anubhav, I developed a piece of code, but I'm not happy with what I did because somehow I got the output, but I know in my heart that this is probably not the best way, probably more on not the right way, probably not the perfect way, probably it can create problems in the production in future. I don't know what I did. I did somehow by looking at some internet blogs. And this is very dangerous situation at times because you are relying on somebody else's code. I, you don't know how will it behave. Yeah. So just somehow got the output to keep your manager happy, but not really going to help you in the long run. So we will be learning all the best practice and gold standards in our course to make sure that what code you build is robust, it's maintainable, it is extensible, and you get always good marks in your reviews. So let's start with the name. So I'm going to use a name. It was, of course, a Z object, Z. And I name my company name, Online Fury Training, Stockholm FT, underscore, let's say, we'll start with August. And I say demo. That's my CDS object name, code data service view name. And I'll say my first demo view. And I will say next. And now, if 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 you remember, I've selected here the, the dollar TMP, the local object. Of course, if I give a productive package, the system is going to prompt me for asking a transport request. So with the help of that, I can transport this object from my dev system to QNP like your normal ABAP program, what you transport. So maybe just give a package name ZOFT pack. That's my package. And this is a package which is provided by my architect. I'm going to say next. And now here you see all my transport requests over here. I can also create a new transport request. Give some description. My demo session on S4 HANA plus ABAP on HANA. So we're going to learn both of it in as part of this single course. And I'll say next. And this is then created a transport request, as you can see on the top. And I'm going to say finish. And let's see now what it gives me. It gives me a beautiful CDS. But oops, it has actually created a very advanced type of object called CDS table function, which we are not interested. We are interested more of more or less on a on a simple artifact. All right. That's what we are interested. So maybe I'm gonna change this. So I'm gonna write define view. So maybe I just use again the wizard, maybe I'm not, not saving this. Just going to delete this again. I'm going to create another one. And it's, it's logged in the same transport request, the deletion as well. And I'll quickly go back and create an, another view. Maybe just go ahead. Because I have already selected an old template which was creating an advanced type of object, which I don't want right now. So I'm going to just give it 
demo anubau and say anubau's for cds view and let's keep the name a little shorter just going to remove this august over here z of the demo anubau that's what i'm going to create and now i'm going to say next already logged that in a in a transport request the next next and now here you see there's a nice little wizard which allows me to create what type of object i'm going to teach you all these variety of objects like hierarchies normal cds cds with association parent child relationship cds with table function and all these things we're going to learn as part of our course and i'll say finish and this creates my data source to extract the data now first thing which i need to give on the top is my view name so let me give a view name z demo and above remember the view name should be less than 16 character this is a certification question what should be the max length of the view name in a cds view it should be 16 characters because it is going to create a ddic view in the system with the same name so i'm going to show you control 6 to open an sap gui window in the same eclipse based window and i'll quickly go to se 11 show you if this view exists already of course it doesn't exist because i'm just still creating it so just go to se 11 and we will just keep the view name copy that and just put sorry in the views and i'm going to say display you would observe that right now it does not exist it still doesn't exist of course because i've not yet activated my view so that's this view name it's going to create a dd view with this name which we give here remember again the length of this is 16 character you can also come back and check here press f1 on your view and you can see the max length is 16 character that's the reason you should never give uh, the name of your cds sql view name here as not more than 16 characters because otherwise it's going to give you activation error now what you see this symbol at the rate of now this is so called something this the, the name of this thing is called annotations so what is annotation annotations are actually uh, in in the world of cds they are the ways to telling the system hey system i want to do something of this kind for example there's an annotation to make sure that i want to give a controlled access to my data i don't want to give access of all my data to everybody so that's this this authorization annotation this is used in cd cds security concept and then you can also tell the CDS engine when, when your CDS view is executed, uh, in what order the filters, the where condition should be evaluated. Yeah. When your CDS view is created, this view is created, when it is created, what will be the, the keys for the CDS? So I want to keep my keys same as my database table keys. So that's why I say preserve key as true. So these are all different annotations. Of course, we're going to learn these annotations in detail. And there are a lot of annotations like UI, analytic, VDM, uh, object model, semantic object, all these annotations we are going to cover as part of this course to make you understand completely uh, the details of the CDS. That's why CDS is also called a semantically rich data model. That is the main reason why, it, because it has an annotation power. Don't be overwhelmed with these terms right now. We'll start from scratch when we get into the CDS chapter. Um, and now I'm going to give my database table name, which is SNWDBPA. That's my table name i just give it now another interesting thing about cds uh, which is so called funda fox so funda fox is an award which i invented during my schooling days whenever you used to read a book there were certain things which are very very important about a topic and if you remember that topics uh, funda fox or that highlighter then you it is important that when a question comes in your exam you have to write that that important highlighted thing because that's the crux of entire paragraph or the chapter. So that's what I call Funda Fox. So if you go to go to certification or if you go to the go to the interview, remember a lot of questions will come from this Funda Fox. So the very first Funda Fox is the the CDS view is not case case sensitive. So CDS view code is not case sensitive. That's a good news. Like ABAP. So ABAP code is also not case sensitive. You can write whether in capital letter or small letter, it doesn't matter. So I can also write SNWD PPA in small letters. That's that's the beauty, guys. It's it's not case sensitive. So now I can do control space for code completion and it shows me a lot of fields from that database table to be put as part of my view. I'm gonna put that, and you can see now here it has put my 
put my fields, all the fields from the database table. I'm gonna keep the node key as a primary key of this, this table and BP role, email address, phone number and rest all the things I'm just going to simply remove at this point of time by keeping just the company name and the BP ID. That's what we do here, okay? Now we are done. I'm gonna save this up and let's activate. And that's your very simplest CDSV example. This is something which is very basic ground zero, guys. I have not yet explained the architecture behind the CDS view. What happens when you activate? What are all the artifacts which are generated? Why it is a code to data paradigm? This is all we will be covering in the course when you learn the concept of HANA, when you learn the concept of code to data paradigm, when you learn the code push down mechanisms. At that point of time, you will be more clear. Right now, it's a just you know, a very simple demo to make you understand how we will be learning these things from scratch. And now uh, we, we, we just go back and quickly check if this view is created. I'm gonna go back here and now say view, please enter my view name, which I've given it there in annotation and now I say display. And voila, you can see my view is created. And this is my DD view created out of that CDS view. So CDS view, when you activate it, actually creates two things. One is it creates a DD view in above layer in SE 11, it is visible. Another, it creates a HANA view in SAP HANA. We're gonna display that in our upcoming days chapter. I'll show you how does the HANA view looks like, the runtime object, the schema concept in HANA, the concepts of, of, of delivery units in HANA, the transportation, the, the, the bottom-up approach, the top-down approaches, all this we'll be discussing in detail in our classes. And now uh, this is the view. I can also do a data preview here, but uh, let's do the data preview over here, maybe on CDS. I'm gonna press F8, and now you will see it is actually fetching all the data from my, uh, from my CDS source. My CDS source is this business partner table. But now, Earlier, what you used to write a select query and now you're writing a CDS view. The benefit, as I mentioned, is actually getting you that data much faster because it has created a HANA view and all the processing, if at all you got to do, that will be done inside SAP HANA, all right? That is what will happen. Now, what I want to do is this data, which you see here as a, as a select query result, maybe I want to show it in the UI. And what we used to do earlier in the past, we used to create something called module pools or dialogue programs or WebDIN pros or BSPs or maybe create some analytic reports. But now in, in this new architecture, we want to go and create a Fiori application and it's very easy. Now understand a Fiori application is a web-based application, okay? It's a web application. Now, the thing is your CDS view is not directly consumable by this web application. It follows web-based architecture because it's based out of a framework called UI5 and that is a web framework. It's a web architecture and to access the data now from your ERP system, you can't access a CDS view. This is another myth in the people that I can create a CDS view and that is supplying the data to my Fury app. No, it never happens. A, a Fury app cannot talk to the CDS view directly. What it talks to is something called a service. Now, it's another myth that people think that the service is always a web service. Guys, there's a difference between web services and the services which we're creating in the new architecture. So basically understand there is a, there is a black box right now for you and this black box is called an OData service. So an OData service is actually a channel. Using this channel, you are exposing your data to a Fiori app. So now the next step in the step one, we created a CDS view. In step two, now we need to expose this data out of a CDS view to an O to convert to this an O data service so that my Fiori application can use this. So to do that, it's very easy. Another power of CDS architecture is using annotations. You remember annotations gives you a lot of power. So one of the annotation which you can use here is at the rate O data dot publish and you can do control space to do code completion. And now this will now create an OData service out of your CDS view directly. Now, what will be the name of the of the OData service? So this is our step number two. The below annotation is going to create, to produce and service 
which can be consumed by any web application and when I say any web application it can be any web app it can be a, a simple normal web application built using ASP JSP web website anything it could be a Java application it could be a dotnet application it could be a node JS application it could be a UI 5 application fury application so anybody can consume now the data of your ERP system this is one of the major channel which we use these days to to achieve the integration so all the integration with the SAP systems SAP S4 on a system is achieved via these O data services now have you seen my video on my YouTube channel what is API hub if you not then I would strongly recommend you to go to my my YouTube channel with the name Anubhav Oberoi and you can also you might have heard about this term called API hub SAP API hub okay you can always go and check my video on SAP API hub you can see it here in this I've explained SAP is also publishing a lot of different API's okay SAP is publishing a lot of these OData data services and soap services for you to achieve integrations so that is what covered in this in, in this short demo to understand what is an API so basically it's an soap service race service or a no data service which allows you to integrate your SAP solutions the new dimension SAP solutions like S4 HANA with other solutions be it a success factor Reba field glass conquer Calidus cloud maybe um, uh, you know maybe salesforce.com or work days or a, a custom Java application or dotnet application earlier you used to use bodies sorry puppies to to create a remote RFC and create and consume the data or web services which are based on SOAP architecture but now there's the new way so called O data services and all the list of these API's are published publicly by SAP for standard objects in the API hub so this is the video you can always check anyway you can always go to my channel for finding the latest and greatest videos on these latest technologies of course not everything is published on YouTube and that is why we have these courses designed for you dedicatedly to make you make you understand things but yes it's still a lot of knowledge a lot of free videos are there on YouTube for you to leverage the power of this new architecture to take the leverage of of this new SAP solutions uh, the fury architecture and all of these things you can you can learn a lot but of course it makes more sense if you attend my regular batches because that's where things are given in sequence on the YouTube channel it's more of like you know demo videos sample videos for quality checks and and making you understand the latest advanced concepts my existing students keep giving me Keep giving me questions and I always respect their questions I don't leave your hand after the classes after the course I still there with you for lifetime whenever you have a problem you're stuck somewhere you can always come back to me and ask questions and I will promise that I'll get you the YouTube video for that like you can see one of my students wanted to know how to integrate camera with fury app so you can take photo from your fury app from your mobile and then you can store it in an SAP system so th these are all kind of sessions which are very advanced high level stuff if you want to do a prototype of fury app where do you do that you want to design a fury elements you want to become a sap full stack developer what is that you need to do so a lot of guidance is also given there on my channel not just the technical learning but also the guidance in terms of what should you do as a, as a developer these days this is one of the most powerful video of all time how to become a full stack developer hey, here is where, where I've explained uh, what is the salary package you can you can expect after becoming an SAP full stack developer you see people are making three times their current salary if they are they are, they are their the, the permanent full stack developer who's a full stack developer why everybody is trying to become a full stack developer because there are a lot of surveys a lot of these big shot companies like SAP Facebook Twitter Amazon they are, they always hire full stack developers the product companies they never hire or maybe they, they, there is chances that you, they will not hire you just because you are a batsman or just a bowler you need to be an all-rounder to become an all-rounder you need to focus to become a full stack developer and I have the guidance for you to how you can in six months of time with with very little effort you can become a full stack developer and get an exponential raise in your salary 
uh, there are a lot of facts and figures about it most of the developers call themselves as a full stack developer because they get more payouts with that their value is more their their payouts are made they are getting more calls they are getting more 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 projects if you're, you're a consultant in US, a freelancer, then make make sense to become a full stack developer. That should be your next target to be. So I'll give you the right goals, the right strategy. So maybe there are trainers who will give you the teaching, but I will give you the strategy. I will give you the, the tactics to market yourself, to position yourself with all the interview questions as part of our course. So there is no, no way that you will probably not get selected in the interviews and, and certification. So now in the next step, since we, we have added this annotation, I'm going to reactivate. And you would now see that our service will be created out of the box. So that, that's a very easy step, how a service is created out of this data source. And now you can see there's a small symbol here, which indicates that now the service is being created. But hey, what it says, it says, yeah, I created a service for you, but this is not yet active. So we need to activate the service and it's a one-time activity, okay? So after step two, in the step three, we need to activate the service. So when you activate a service, what happens exactly? System creates an ICF node. ICF stands for Internet Communication Framework. If you want to create any web service or web-based application or web-based interface out of SAP system, you have to create an ICF node. And the creating an ICF node manually is a very cumbersome process. And that's where SAP gives you here a transaction code to activate these auditor services for you easily. So you can go back to our SAP system and the transaction code to activate the auditor service is slash n slash IWFND slash main service transaction. Don't worry, I'm going to put this, this, all these details in as part of my presentation, and I'm going to share this presentation. You can download and keep it with you for a lifetime for your reference. Always take a print of my presentation and interview, and I, I, I can guarantee you that you will not come without taking the offer letter at home. All right, so now let's go back, and this is the transaction code slash IWFND. I'm just going to execute that. And that's where I'm going to register and find my service. So guys, what happens behind the scene, system generates an audit of service with same name as your CDS name, underscore CDS. So copy this name, go back and do a add service here. And I'm going to say, please register my service. The service name is my CDS name, underscore CDS, press enter. And voila, you see that entry over there for your auditor service. What is an auditor service? Don't worry, I will cover from scratch what is an auditor service. Right now, just understand, it is the only agent which, which is consumed by Fury. A Fury application can only talk to an auditor service. Right now, just understand that much is sufficient enough. This is the only channel by which it, it, will, call the, it will call the application layer. And now I'm going to just register local object of course you can also lock it in a transport and and send it as part of a transport request to q and pre p system accordingly and now this is created so i'm going to go back to my cds and over here in the outline view you would see there are secondary objects and it shows that yes for this cds there is an extra object which was generated due to annotation and that object is your your o data service you can see it's it's, it's shown here i can right click and I can now say, hey, please open that for me. And guys, did you observe that I'm doing all of this in my local computer? Yes, exactly. The way you work with an environment in your company by using your local machine, connecting to SAP GUI, connecting to the browser, connecting to everything like in an intranet environment, we have a server very powerful. It allows you to, to connect everything from your local machine. Yes, exactly. So you can you can connect to also SAP GUI as if like you're working in your company network uh, to to our SAP system also as well there. Okay. So I'll just quickly um, show you a glimpse of the same. So maybe I just open my system over here, and now you see in my local computer I have a SAP GUI installed, and I am now able to open this system from my local computer. Yeah, that's the, the, the beauty here. Uh, I am able to connect to this system uh, from my local computer and I can do the way I work in my company. 
So in my company, when you guys have your company laptop, you go to the company, you connect to your company VPN, and then you're able to access your SAP systems. Similarly, you can do that. You just need an internet connection. That's it. And then you are able to connect to our server, onlinefurytrainings.com server, with the help of your local machine. Everything runs on local system, and this is pretty fast and amazing. And this is an S4 HANA latest release we are onto. So you get all the cutting edge features. Maybe in your company you don't have S4 HANA today, but you can experience these features right away. Prepare yourself for future and mesmerize your your manager when the S4 HANA is implemented. You can see S4 Core 103. That is the latest. Uh, of 18 on 18 i think 18 uh 190 this is 1902 system so that's what we have it available it, actually it's an on prem so 1811 it is uh, we have it uh, sorry 1809 it is uh, so cloud version has 1905 1902 so this is 1809 latest version of s4 on on premise system what is an on premise what is a cloud we will discuss that in coming days and you can see the database here it's based out of hana db hdb system this is the, the primary database is hana as you can see there so now i can also go to the same transaction and find my service over there it's a filter please search for my service which i just register and there you go now from here you can see there's an icf node created and it's green it's activated already so maybe i can run from here i say call browser and this will ask me hey would you like to launch it yes of course why not and there you go your first o data service is live my friends on the browser and this can be consumed by any third party applications be it a java application a dotnet application they can call a service or node.js or UI5 or a Fiori. So in this context right now, we're going to consume this OData service with a with a with a Fiori application. So I'm going to copy this entity set name. So what is an entity set? What is an entity type? All this we'll discuss in coming days. Right now, understand this is your endpoint for accessing the data. And I just put that endpoint and press enter. And now here you can see you've got the data. All your business partners have come, guys. You can see the data which was which was visible there is now available as part of a service output. Don't be overwhelmed and confused with this output. This looks very difficult for you maybe now to understand, but just keep it uh, keep it as it is that there is some output which is now exposed to the web world, to the internet world. And now I'm going to create a simple report using Fiori to expose this data and showcase you the power of, of new reporting with the help of the new architecture. I'm going to go back. This is my web IDE tool. How did I got this tool? Don't worry. I'm going to explain this in the in the classes going forward. And I will just connect to the system. Just log in here to my system to now create a Fiori application using this this service okay so all already everything the entire environment is configured in my system but when i when i take you through the classes i will i will take you through all you through this this setup of these tools how to get these tools in your computer how to connect to the server and all that things will be covered when in detail when we will go into the classes okay so maybe now i'm going to right click and i will say please create a new fury app and we will use an automatic <laughs> template to create a Fiori app. Those who have no clue about what is Fiori, don't worry. You can at least create basic Fiori apps out of the box with this training and you can you can present it to the end user deploy and we'll be able to run this in the in the systems. And now I will choose a master detail Fiori app and I will say next. And let's give a Fiori app name Z Anubau Demo. And this is my first Fiori app, www.online fioritrainings.com that's our website and i say oft.com and i'm going to give a description my post fiori app with s4 hana and i'm going to say finance it's a finance application and now i'm going to say next and now he it asked me hey which system are you like to connect so i will say i want to connect to my s4 nana system how did this entry have come don't worry about this we will discuss this in detail when we will go to the classes okay everything will be covered from ground zero scratch we will we are just scratching the surface right now 
to just understand at a top level what's going on. Of course, these concepts are, are, are going to take a little bit of time for you to understand from scratch, but we'll go right every single line of code, understanding on the piece of paper, uh, uh, starting with a blank sheet to make you understand the architecture and, and building these things up. And now let's give the name of our service once again, which is what I want, copy that. And just mention the service name. This is our service which is created. I'm gonna select this and say next. And now here I'll say, I want to show this application uh, on a kind of a launch pad, simple launch pad. And I will say my company name should come in the title. And I want to sh also show my um, company phone number on the result screen. Yeah, That's what I want to show as of now and say finish. Now watch out guys, this is going to create a a very simple report but guess what this report is a fury report it is not a normal dialogue program what you used to do in the past it's actually a fury based application my friends okay that is the biggest benefit you get with this new architecture by creating a fury application so we have created a fury application so right now in this course we'll not go deep dive inside the fury we'll just understand the basic concepts uh, of, of fury and and we will be able to sufficiently create a simple web-based fury apps on top of our auditor service exposed out of cds views and also some transactional apps using annotation concept and analytic apps we will be creating them but uh, of course, if you want to go deep dive inside coding of Fury, uh, creating MVC based Fury apps, of course, you can go to my website and subscribe my course on, on Fury end to end development, starting from scratch. You can see this is the module you can go ahead with SAP UI5 and Fury development on WebID with Auditor service. So this is where we will cover these from scratch, writing every single line of line of code. So currently the module which you are currently going through is this, this module. Of course, whatever knowledge I'll give you here, it's more than sufficient enough to get started with the with the idea of a BAP on HANA and create a simple basic Fury application. That's what you will be able to achieve it. Now let's execute our app. Now we're ready then. Let's run this up. I'm gonna execute. I say run please. And guess what? In just 30 minutes or about an hour, you're able to get a, a Fury app created on top of CDS, OData, and and a, a good user experience you are going to get. So it's, it takes a little bit of time because loading the necessary libraries. And you can see now it's asking me my credentials, which proves that it's connecting to a real system. It's not just, you know, kind of a dummy app. It's a real productive app, which can be delivered to the end users. And voila, now finally it shows me the results over there. You can see SAP, all those business partners are now displayed over here. The beauty of this app, as I mentioned initially, is it's it's feature of adapting itself according to device so now i just show you a little bit of uh, a little bit of magic over here i press f12 on my keyboard and now i will turn my my computer my desktop screen into a mobile screen so you can see here there is a nice beautiful option on your on your browser window when you press f12 this comes up called doggle device toolbar option and if you click this is this desktop is going to turn into a mobile device. I'm just gonna click that and wow, see how beautiful the app adapts. You can choose here the devices, maybe you want to run it in a in an iPhone X, and this is how it's gonna look like in an iPhone X. So that, that's the beauty. You can also reload probably. So now it's gonna load the application, it's gonna adapt it. Since the iPhone has less screen space as compared to as compared to the, uh, the the desktop application, it has automatically made my first list hidden. And now I'm able to uh, see this application in a different way altogether. So with the, with the proper mobile-like experience, which I get it out of the box, that's the biggest benefit of utilizing the Fury. So you can see here, everything gets adopted automatically. You can go to the themes, you can change the themes over here. So the default themes here is Blee's theme. Of course, you can change the animation, the cozy content. A lot of these, these amazing features are in place with, with the Fury. And you can see it adapts itself automatically based on the device you run. That is the biggest advantage of this new presentation layer, new user experience. Since I switch back to the desktop mode and reload, since I have luxury of space now, 
you can see here it shows me now my application running on a desktop mode or a tablet mode it is going to get me this list on the left and the details on the right this is so called a master detail fury app within just a minute or 45 minutes of time we are able to create our first application imagine what will happen when you complete this 40 hours of power pack course with all these detailed concept you are going to change the way or are you going to change the perspective the way you're looking at today the s or abap on architecture so with that i'm done with today's demo session what you need to do next to subscribe to this course please feel free to write to us on install.abap at gmail.com for subscribing to this course we will share all the necessary details our batch is starting today today was our first session it's a weekend batch with 7 to 9 p.m. India time every weekend. So we will be completing it about over, um, over about, um, let's say 40 hours of total duration. So each weekend we are completing four hours. So it's about 10 weekends. Um, so which will come about 2.5 months of time, we will be completing this batch. So with that, Anubhav is signing out. Thank you so much for attending this demo session. And I hope to see you on board soon. More, many of you already onboarded and you're attending this session for the first time. With that, once again, thank you so much. Keep watching the videos. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Feel free to leave the feedback on the comment box below. Have a nice day and goodbye.